And good morning, church family. Good to see you all here. Got a good crowd of people here, and I'm glad to have you all here this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I am so glad to be a part of a family, of, a body of believers that uh, not only likes to be together uh, on Sundays and Sunday nights and Wednesdays, but likes to be together during the week. Yesterday, a, a group of us went out to uh, Camp Hensel, where we have our se uh, uh, week of camp, Central Texas Christian Camps. Did a little work on the girls' quad uh, cabins. And uh, if you need siding, put on your house. Contact Michael Head. He knows how to he knows how to get them angles underneath the under the pitch of that roof. Just really good stuff. No, we did more than just do that though. We had some people painting and, and working and and putting in windows and, and units. The Scott and Joe Squires know how to are, are experts at putting in those uh, window units back in where they can take them out. So if you need help with that, I'm good for nothing. I just stood there and watched and you know, I held a ladder, grabbed a screw every once in a while, but you know, I'm I, I, I preach. That's that's pretty much all I can do. No. But it was a good time, and uh, if you missed it and you really wanted to go and be a part of that, or if you just want to know more about the camp and you know you come in and experience something that's kind of low key and not too busy, February the 9th, February the 9th, they're going to have another camp work day, and um, and and I'm sure many of us from the church will be going to help. And if you want to go, talk to Scott and Joe. They'll tell tell you how to how to get and how to get signed up for that and ready to go. It's good to have you all here this morning. Don't forget about uh, Blue Jean Sunday coming up at the end of the month. Uh, we're collecting blue jeans, all different uh, sizes and shapes. Uh, they are, we are while, we'll, while we will take any size of jeans, we are focusing, hopefully we're trying to focus on sizes that will fit our, the children who go to our elementary school. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that they're taken care of. So on the 29th, last Sunday of the month, we're going to have a blue jean Sunday. Bring your blue jeans, wear your blue jeans, and come to church, and let's, uh, let's help out some people in our community as well. <clears throat> we, are starting a new, we have started a new series this year. Uh, the series is uh, all about remembering things. What does the Bible say about want, the things that we should remember? What does God want us to remember? And so I, I, while I'm trying to figure out what I want to do it, right now we're just going to call it Things to Remember. Uh, we started off last Sunday focusing on uh, the, 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 the stone, the Ebenezer stone that's found, that was read about in Samuel. How after the Lord helped the Israelites uh, fight off the Philistines, that Samuel took a stone and, and pushed it up on its side and gave that stone, stone a name. He called it Ebenezer to where it would mean, thank you, Lord, for the help that you've given us so far. And the idea is that every time someone walked by that stone, they would say, what's that stone that's standing up on its side? How, you know, they would say, that's the Ebenezer stone. That stone's name Ebenezer. And this is why it helped us. And so and we, start, we said that maybe we, and maybe it could be possible that we could see the, the, the empty tomb of, of, that Christ came out of on Resurrection Day, that that could be our Ebenezer, because that stone that was rolled away from that tomb reminds us that Jesus conquered death. And that Jesus conquered uh, uh, that, and so if we believe Him and we follow Him and we do what He commands and we obey His gospel, that we too, when that time comes, we will also have that conquering of death. But the things that we are called to remember as Christians are very wide and very ranged. I'm looking forward to sharing the, the lessons this year about things that we are called to remember. Perhaps you remember when you were young, still living with your parents, and, and you were old enough to go out on your own and, and hang out with your friends, or maybe you were old enough to date and go out on a date with a pretty young girl or a handsome young man. And as you were leaving, do you remember what your parents or what your mom and dad would say as you were walking out the door? Perhaps some of you got, and I love you, be careful, be safe. 
Make sure you check the gas before you get in the truck. I don't know. Maybe it was, if you get in trouble, don't call me because I'm not going to come bail you out. You know, hey, let's face it. Some of us, some of us had, to ha had to be told that. Be sweet. Be kind. If you're going to be late, call me. If you're stuck, call me. Maybe you had one of those kind of things. The words... What, so, but, I mean, maybe you can recall. Maybe you know, maybe your parents right now, you, maybe you already know what you are telling your kids as they get old enough to be ind more independent and go out with their friends or ground eight. Maybe you already know what you want to tell them. I don't remember where I came up with the phrase. I'm 90% I'm positive I got it from my mother. But that as I was going out to hang out with my friends and drive and be on my own a little bit, my mother would always say, remember who you are and whose you are. Why is that so important? I did not have to ask her that question. I was, my, my family had, had a lot of uh, things to think about and say to teach me. And when my mom told me and my dad told me, remember who you are and whose you are, they were telling me two things. One is that when you go out to do whatever it is you're going to do, you need to remember you are carrying your family's last name. And that name is important. What we have done to make that name good and right. So when people hear that you are Frank Crane's son, they already know quite possibly how you're supposed to act and how you're supposed to be. That when, you're, when they hear you're a Pat Crane's son, they ex they're going to have an expectation of how you're supposed to act and who you're supposed to be. What kind of manners you're going to have. What kind of places you're going to... The places that you're going to go. The things you're going to do. They are... You are representing your family when you go out. But she also wanted to make sure that there was something even more important than that. That I need to remember whose I am. Whose I am. And that is I am a Christian. And while I represent my family's last name, and when, when, when people see me physically, they see Frank Crane and Pat Crane's son, they, when they also see me, they also see someone who calls himself a Christian, and I am required. It is expected of me to toe the line, to walk the walk, to do and say and act as a Christian should. To not give anybody a reason to question why I do the things I do, but to expect it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, Paul refers to us as ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making His appeal through us. We all know about ambassadors. Every nation has one. Every country has one. They all come together and meet. And the, basically the idea is, is that when an ambassador comes and stands before a group of people, he comes and he says, when you see me, you do not see a physical person, but you see the interests and the, and the spirit of the country that I represent. And the things that my country want to be said and done are going to come through, are going to be initiated and pushed by me, through me. Because I represent my country's interests. My country wants things, needs things. My country wants to help do things. And therefore, it is my responsibility and my job to make sure that what my country's desires are, I make it happen. And so yes, that being an ambassador for Christ actually means the same thing. Jesus put it more personally, though, when he was still in the world. In, the, in John, the last chapters of John, he, referred, he told his disciples, if you want to see the Father, then look right here. He's standing right in front of you because if you see me, you see the Father. You want to know who the Father of what is? He's looking at me. And I'm going to send you out. And when I do, you're going to represent that. You're going to represent me so that if they see me, if they see, excuse me, if they see you, they, will, they should know and remember that you are a follower of Christ. And Christ is the Son of God. And Jesus does not do anything 
without his father giving him the instructions to. So if we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making his appeal through us, what, 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 let me ask you a question. Would it make a difference about what your attitude would be when you came into work tomorrow? Remembering, remembering that you are an ambassador for Christ? Would it make a difference when you're getting dressed in the morning? Would you be mindful that you're Christ's ambassadors? Would it affect what you say? Would it affect you, uh, how you act? Would it affect what you're thinking about? Where you're going? How you treat your kids, your spouse? Your fellow employees? More importantly than that, oh, by the way, you know, when we, when we talk about remember who you are, many of the people my age and younger probably can't help but to think about the movie The Lion King. And in The Lion King, Simba loses his father and he gets and he runs off to, to hang out with a with a with a a warthog and a what was Meerkat. Meerkat, thank you. And while he's, while he's away from his father, and while he's away from his father's teachings, he learns a new phrase, akuna matata, which means no worries. It's okay. Things will just happen. And you just got to roll with it. And while he's away and he's trying to figure out who he is, somebody comes along and some amazing things happen to the Lion King. And Mufasa comes back and says, you have forgotten who you are. You have forgotten me. You got to go back and remember who you are. Well, I mean, I'm, and so now all of you are going to go back and rewatch re the Lion King now. So there you go. You're welcome, Walt Disney. But that's about the point. The point is, is that more importantly than like he, the lesson he learned, we have to remember who we are. Your last name is important. The family that you came from is important. Your heritage is important. Parents, I hope that you take some time while your kids are young and wanting to know that you tell your kids about your family. Yes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because how you got here, how you came to be, is, like, is a story that is like no other. How, how, how uh, Troy came into existence and the experiences that he felt and the experience that happened to him is far unique. It's very unique. Every one of you have a story just like that of your family line. You know, some of you have a family line full of renegades, rebels, and rogues, don't we all? Some of you have family members who were, well, let's just, you know, a little bit crazy. Some of you have family... <laughs> Don't point at your dad, Parker. Come on. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Some of you have family members that, you know, were upstanding members of the community. But your last name is important. Kids, teenagers, listen up. When you go out those doors and you're doing things on your own, when you're driving by yourself, when you're on a date, when you're playing sports, when you're showing your steers, whatever it is you're doing, you need to remember that you have your family's name on the back of your chest, on the back of your back. And when they see you, they already know whose kid you are. And you're living in a very small town. It doesn't take scooby to figure out who you belong to real quick. What you do and what you say and how you act not only signifies the kind of person you are, but it also... Get a little excited. I need to calm down, Carl. <laughs> it not only signifies who you are and how you act, but it also symbolizes how you were raised. And I know many of your mamas and daddies. I know many of your grandparents and grandpas and grandmas. I know how you were raised. And so when you step out on that field, when you're driving down that road, when you're going to those classes, you got to remember who you are. More importantly, as a Christian, Jesus says, you, you also need to remember who you are. Because it doesn't start at the who, the who's, it starts at the who. It starts at the who. Jesus said, you are salt. What good is salt if it doesn't have any flavor? 
Matthew says it's not good the only thing it's good to only be trampled on by men. I think it's Luke, Matt, that you said that in Luke, Luke says that the only thing it's good for, the only thing that's salt with no flavor in it, the only thing it's good for is good for the pile. The manure pile. You are salt. You are supposed to be salt of the earth. You are light. You are to be a beacon of hope for people who may not have a lot any. Some of you are saying, well, Blaine, you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the experiences I've experienced. Are you here? Are you breathing? Are you believing? You have had a hard life. I get it. You have had a, a terrible situation happen to you. Have you lost your faith? No. If you are still on this side of your faith with God, then guess what? You are still a light. And believe it or not, somebody is watching you having overcome what you've experienced and saying, if they can do it, with God's help, surely I can. So you're a city on a hill. I remember six years ago when we first came here to interview for this job, for this position. There was three different ways to get to Franklin. You go through Calvert. You go through Bremont. Well, that's two. Okay. Coming from where we were coming from. So Michelle says, well, the Bre the going through Bremont's closer. So let's go. Uh, well, I've never been here before. Let's go through Bremont. It was 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. It had already gotten dark. And I'm driving through that road from the high interstate to Bremont, through Bremont to Franklin. And we're taking twists and turns and curves. And I'm surrounded by trees. And it seems like as I got further and further in, the road kept getting narrower and narrower. And I'm thinking, where in the world am I going? <laughs> Does this town even exist? We get to Bremont and we drive through Bremont. We're thinking, ooh, okay, this is Bremont. All right. Wonder what Franklin looks like. So we go through Bremont. We come around that curve. We more twists and turns and ups and downs. And then off in the distance, I see bright lights. I'm thinking, hey, we're getting closer to it. We must be getting closer to Franklin. Then Michelle picked up on those lights. Hey, look at those lights out there. I wonder what that is. I said, well, honey, those lights are pretty bright. That's got to be the football stadium. Wrong. It was the newly built ranch baseball park that we drove by. And then we get into Franklin. And we see the houses and the community and everything else. We're like, okay. This is not too bad. Kind of breathed a sigh of relief, too. Because I was finally where I was wanting to be. When you're a city on a hill, and people are walking through those dark valleys and those lights, places that are dark, and you're wondering where you are and how you're lost, and all of a sudden that beacon sticks out, that light sticks out, you see that city, you think, okay, I'm a little closer. I'm not alone anymore. Some of you have been alone. Some of you have been lonely, have been alone for a long time. Some of you have been away from God. And that's a loneliness that no one ever wants to experience. And when you now, you are in the light. You are a kingdom and you are salt. You are a part of God's family. And now you represent. You are an ambassador of Christ. And they say, if they can find a place that is safe and can have a place of rest, then if it's God's will, surely I can too. That's who you are. That's who you are called to be. But then the other part of this, remember whose you are. Whose you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 refers to us as a fragrance. We are a fragrance to Christ, to God, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. When I was growing up, I never wanted, when I was thinking straight, I never wanted to disappoint my parents. I never wanted to embarrass my mom or dad. I always wanted to try to do things that were right. And yes, I messed up. Yes, I did some knuckleheaded things. But I learned a lot. See, I'm the baby of my family. I had two older brothers. And they did stuff that got them in really big trouble. I took a quick note. I am not doing that. 
I, I, I just thought of other stuff to do to get myself in trouble, quite frankly. My actions were an outgrowth of the inner awareness of who I was. I understood that. What does the, that awareness that God, our Heavenly Father, does do that has an effect on our actions and on our thoughts? When you talk about God, your Heavenly Father, how do you talk about Him? What do you say about Him? What do you know about Him? Is, is your Heavenly Father... Is your Heavenly Father loving? Are you loving? Is your Heavenly Father kind? Do you try to show kindness when you can? Is your Heavenly Father forgiving? Holy? Does your Heavenly Father show you mercy? Is your Heavenly Father a just Father? In other words, when fatherly justice comes in the fact, you know that you've done something wrong and you know that justice needs to be required, but you know that because He is your Heavenly Father, it is going to be fair, it is going to be right, and yeah, there might be some punishment, but you know what? You know it's going to be done out of love because the last thing you want is someone else taking care of the justice when you know that you're, what you really want is your Heavenly Father taking care of your justice because because your Heavenly Father knows who you are. And along with justice comes mercy and forgiveness and grace. Grace that you did not deserve. That I deserve. So who you are represents what your Father does. Whose you are. You are a child of God. And you, can, you have the right to tell people who your Heavenly Father is. I don't know what your earthly father or who, what your earthly father was like for many of you. Or even if you knew yours. But let me tell you something this morning. God, God transcends our excuses for bad behavior. God transcends our reasoning for our selfish lifestyle. God does all that. God has 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 gone, bypassed and, and and started the acts of forgiveness. God has has taken that impurity out, and now has a called has chosen you by adoption, and we are His children. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd watching over my soul. We are His children and He is our Father. It's a great song to start off this sermon, man. We are His children and He is our Father. That's why it's important also to remember whose you are. Because when you remember whose you are and whose you are, then you can confidently understand that you are a child of God. You are a child of God. 1 John 1, 12 says, For many have received Him, to Him He gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood. Is blood and family important? You better believe it is. But this is more important. Not born nor of, of will of flesh. Many of you have did the planning thing. Well, we want to have this many kids and we want to have, we want to have them this time and this age gap apart. And some of you got surprises like me and me and Michelle did. But that's okay. What God did is far more better than that. Nor of will of man, but of God. Back in the Old Testament, I got my slides mixed up, in, 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 I, in Isaiah, Isaiah says this. Isaiah chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, 43, starting in verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord, your Creator, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. 
In my Bible, that ends with an exclamation mark. You are mine. You do not belong to anyone else. When I, when you, so, and, and how, this is how you're going to know that you are mine. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And, when you and, and, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched. Nor will the flames burn you. Why? Because who you belong to is this. I am the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's who you are, who you belong to. And so with confidence, it's with confidence that we can say, not by our own or any actions that we've done, it's all about God and what Jesus did. We can say that I am God's child. Everybody stand up. Repeat after me. I am. I am. Somebody. Somebody. I am. I am. God's child. God's child. I am. I am. A new creation. A new creation. I am. I am. Somebody. Somebody. And the Lord. And the Lord. Don't make. Don't make. No junk. No junk. Amen. Amen. Be seated. There's going to be days, weeks, years, times and seasons where you are going to be walking through neck deep water. You're going to be walking through fire that feels like it's hotter than anything you've ever experienced. The one thing that you can do that will keep you going is to remember who you are and whose you are. And when you know that, you know what God's going to do for you. Because He said He will. The Lord your God, the Holy One, has adopted you, has called you by your name, and you are His. That's what a Christian needs to remember. If you have not accepted that, then the invitation is being offered to you every day, but it's offered to you right now. The invitation is to experience, to come and be a part of this body of believers, to be a part of this Christian family, to be a part of this church family that has that faith and has that understanding. Whatever it is you need this morning, we can help you with it. If you want prayers, we will pray with you. If you want counseling and advice, we will sit down and talk with you. If today's the day you want to give your Christ, uh, give yourself to Christ in baptism, we can help you with that too. Whatever your need is this morning, please come forward as we stand and as we sing. What?